Gord's speech tonight is entitled Value. Please welcome Gord Grant. Value. Mark failed to mention that I showed up to the event for Lance Miller thinking I was going to see Lance Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> Value. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. The word value can mean different things to different people in different contexts at different times. It's probably very easy for you to answer the question if I was to say, what is a good value? Or what do you value? Let's try the first one. What is a good value? Most of us would assume that that's quite simple. That's where the benefit we get is bigger than the price we pay for. It could be a product, it could be a service, it could be almost anything that we decide to use. But if I was to ask you, what are your values? That's a little more difficult for you to answer because now you're using both analytical thinking and you're using emotional thinking. And you need to combine those two. So what are your values usually causes people a little stutter. They have to think about what their values really are, what, they're, what they really value. When you get into looking at values, it could be a couple of different things. On an analytic side, if I was to ask Roger what does he value, he might say, I really value the car I own because it gets me through the snow so I can go to work. And in that same conversation, he might say, you know, I was just thinking what I truly value, though, is the love and support that I get from my partner. So the term, what do you value, could go a bunch of different ways. And for the number of people in this room, there will be a different response to that based on your own experience. Now, where does sentimental value fit into all of this? I've got a very small pocket knife that my father had with him for probably 40 years. It was in his pocket throughout most of my childhood. So for me, it has great sentimental value, but it's a worn out, dull little knife. So where does sentimental value fit in the words of value? If I was to add S, of the value. And ask the question, now what are your values? Now that takes a little bit of thinking. Very few of us can list our values right off the top of our head one after another. It's quite difficult. And it's supposed to be difficult. Our values are how we show up in the world. It's how people get to know us. And it's also how we show up for ourselves. So understanding your values requires you to give it some thought. You need to know what the value is. You need to know where it came from. You need to know what it means. And you need to understand, is it serving me right now? That is not something that you can do quite easily. When I'm working with clients, it's important for me to understand what their values are. And you'd be surprised that people can easily answer the question of what is a good value. When I see what are your values, this S stands for stall or stammer or stud. Because they sit there and it's like the, the cartoon where their eyes kind of roll and they go, they come up with something. And they give me a couple of values. And their motherhood and apple pie kinds of things that everybody wants to throw up there. But I'd say, okay, how important are those to you? And then they start to get a little confused. So what I did is I created this list of values. And I've got a, this sheet for everybody to work from. It's a list of values down one side of the paper. But when I hand it to them and say, okay, now have a look at these values and see which ones apply to you, the ones that they originally picked disappear off the list. And as they go through it, they go, oh yeah, that's important. And, oh, I like this one. And this is really important for me as well. And they create an entirely different list of values that they want to work from. 
Once they have this list, though, it's not a question of top five, top ten. You go through the entire list and you rate them on one to ten, how important these things are to you. And once you've got that list, then it's very easy for you to understand these things are most important, these things are somewhat important for me to work with. Now, as Toastmasters, we are incredibly fortunate is that we live our life in evaluation. We give and receive evaluations with an open heart. If you've got a set of values, they're doing you absolutely nothing if you're not acting upon them. And that's what the last column in this sheet is for. It's to let you decide, one to 10, how am I acting against that value? What am I doing to honor it, to make a difference? Once you've got those values in place, then you can work with them. This isn't a one and done activity. When you look at this sheet, it isn't something you go, okay, these are my values and I never have to worry about it again. I want you to photocopy this thing. I want you to use it in your weekly plan or your monthly plan at, at the very latest. Because if you don't know what you're trying to achieve by the actions you're doing every week and what values you're applying, you are going to get confused. In every day and in every week, we're going to run into some kind of disturbance, some kind of distraction, something that makes us uncomfortable. If you get to that kind of that icky feeling you have in your stomach when something just doesn't seem right, and your stomach, the, your gut is trying to tell you that it's not perfect, this is an opportunity to pull that sheet out and look at your values. I will guarantee that there is a value that you are not properly honoring or you have a value conflict. If honesty and family are two things that you might hold dear and a sales rep has to bend the truth a little bit on sale in order to get the commission that she needs in order to feed her family, now you've got a value conflict. You did what you had to do and if you don't have this sheet, it's very easy for that situation to become a story. And that rationalization that you had about, I kind of weaseled out a little bit, I tried to get a good value on my values, and I weaseled it a little bit, well, now I'm starting feeling very strong as a result of that. If you know what you've done, you can correct it. You'll know better next time. But if you let that story go on and on and on, it becomes part of your truth. And then all of a sudden, you're stepping farther and farther away from your values. So Toastmasters, we're in an enviable position. Take the sheet, evaluate what you're doing, and I guarantee that it will make what you're trying to accomplish far more easy. Toastmasters.